There are two different methods for finding the Fourier series coefficients. If the signal is a sum of cosines or sinusoids, then one can use the Euler representation for the sinusoids and find the coefficients directly by inspection. For more general signals, however, we need to use a method of integration. So our objective in this video is to apply the integration formula to find the Fourier series coefficients. So recall that a signal x of t can be expressed as a sum of complex sinusoids with complex amplitudes, ak, where the frequencies of the sinusoids are harmonics of the fundamental frequency. And that's why the frequencies here are k times f naught. These coefficients are obtained using the integration formula as follows. ak is 1 over t naught, the integral over some interval of length t naught of x of t times e to the minus j 2 pi k f naught t dt. So our steps for applying the integration formula are first to graph x of t, then from the graph we're going to find the fundamental period t naught. Once you have t naught you're going to find limits that make the integration convenient or as easy as possible. And then the fourth step is actually to do the integration. So let's start with an example of this sawtooth waveform that I've sketched, and we want to find the Fourier series coefficients corresponding to x of t. So we have a graph that's already drawn, and from the graph we can see that the fundamental period is t equals 2 seconds. You can see that from 0 crossing to 0 crossing is 2 seconds. So that implies that when we set up our integral, we're going to choose the limits of integration to be any interval of length two seconds. And different choices for that interval make the integral easier or more difficult. Let's suppose we start with an, choosing an interval from zero to two seconds. Well, if I write down what x of t is over that interval, because I'm going to need to substitute that into the integration formula, I have, in this case, x of t is one-half t when t is between zero and one, so that's this section of the curve. And you can see that that's a straight line with slope 1 half and intercept 0. However, when I get for t greater than 1, then the equation for x of t needs to change. The slope remains the same, but the intercept for this second segment is different. So on the interval from 1 to 2, my definition for x of t is 1 half t minus 1. So if I plug that into the integral formula, I have that ak is 1 over 2, 1 over t naught, t naught is 2, the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 half t e to the minus j pi k t dt. In the exponent, I've substituted 1 half for f naught, and that gets rid of the 2 that's multiplying the pi. So I have this term from 0 to 1, and then I have another term from 1 to 2, where I'm integrating 1 half t minus 1 quantity times e to the minus jk pi t dt. Well, the question is whether there's an easier choice for the limit other than 0 to 2. And it turns out there is. If I choose my limits to go from minus 1 to 1, then I only have one definition of x of t. And x of t is 1 half t. So my expression for the ak become one half integral from minus one to one one half t e to the minus j pi k t dt and this is a simpler integral to evaluate because there's only one of them as opposed to the two that we have if we choose zero to two as our limits i want to emphasize that either of these choices will give you the identical answer assuming you do the calculus correctly now we're not actually going to finish the integration here. If you remember from calculus, to do this you'd have to use integration by parts. So suppose that x of t is 1 plus cosine of 2 pi t. Well, our first step is going to be to graph x of t, and we see that it's as a cosine shape, and it's offset by one unit in the positive direction, so it goes from 2 to 0 rather than a cosine going from between minus 1 and 1. In this case, we see that the fundamental period is 1 second, so the fundamental frequency is 1 hertz, 
And in this case, I have the same definition for x of t for any interval. So I'm going to use the interval from minus 1 half to 1 half. And then my integrand is quantity 1 plus cosine 2 pi t times e to the minus j 2 pi kt dt. And we've substituted for f naught being equal to 1. It's simplest in expanding the cosine in terms of its Euler representation. So I have 1 plus 1 half e to the j 2 pi t plus 1 half e to the minus j 2 pi t now in the integrand. And this leads us to three separate integrals. The first one is the integral from minus 1 half to 1 half of 1 times e to the minus j 2 pi kt dt. Then the second one is associated with the e to the j 2 pi term. And the third one is associated with the e to the minus j 2 pi term. And I've combined the exponents in both of those cases. So my second term becomes an integrand of e to the minus j 2 pi quantity k minus 1 t dt. And then the third one has the integrand e to the minus j 2 pi k plus 1 t dt. So we'll evaluate these three integrals. So I'm going to start with the integral from minus a half to a half of e to the minus j 2 pi k t dt. And in order to evaluate that integral, I remember the formula that e to the a t dt integrates to 1 over a e to the a t. And that's provided that a is not equal to 0. Now it doesn't matter whether a is a real number or a complex number. Here a is a purely imaginary number. We would identify a being equal to minus j 2 pi times k. And then this integrand is e to the a t. So provided k is not equal to 0, in that case a would not be equal to 0, and our integral, we have 1 over a, or 1 over negative j 2 pi k, and then I have e to the a t, e to the minus j 2 pi k t, evaluated at the limits of 1 half and minus 1 half. Now in the case where k is equal to 0, then the integrand becomes 1, so I'm integrating 1 from minus a half to a half, and that's fairly straightforward. That becomes t evaluated at limits 1 half and minus 1 half. Now we can carry these two evaluations out by substituting in the limits, and I get negative 1 over j 2 pi k times e to the minus j pi k minus e to the j pi k. And if I group the terms, the 2j, and the minus sign and the quantity in the parentheses, I see that this expression is equivalent to sine pi k divided by pi k. Remember, k is not equal to 0. Sine of any integer multiple of pi is exactly 0. So when k is not equal to 0, the, or the integral goes to 0. When k is equal to 0, substituting the limits, I get exactly 1. So that's the first of those three terms in the formula for a k. The second of those three terms is 1 half integral minus 1 half to 1 half e to the minus j 2 pi times the quantity k minus 1 times t dt. And to integrate this, we're going to use the same formula for the indefinite integral of e to the a t. It's just in this case, a is going to be minus j 2 pi times the quantity k minus 1. If k is equal to 1, then a becomes equal to 0, and my integrand is exactly 1. So in that case, when k equals 1, I have 1 half t evaluated at 1 half and minus a half. When k is not equal to 1, I have 1 over negative j 2 pi quantity k minus 1 times e to the minus j 2 pi quantity k minus 1 t. Evaluate those at those limits. And when k is equal to 1, I get exactly 1 half. When k is not equal to 1, again, the integral becomes equal to 0. And it's the same sort of logic that we used up in step 1, except here we're going to have sine of pi times the quantity k minus 1. Well, that's still an integer multiple of pi, and the sine of an integer multiple of pi is always 0. So this integral is exactly 0. And then the third case, we can do that following almost the identical series of steps. It's just we have k plus 1 instead of k minus 1, and we get 1 half when k is equal to minus 1, and 0 when k is not equal to minus 1. 
putting those three terms together, we see that the Fourier series coefficients, a k, they're one half when k is equal to zero, and that was from the first term, one, that we labeled one, and then when k is equal to plus one, that was the second integral that we did, and in that case we obtained one half. The third integral gives one half when k is equal to minus one, and it's zero otherwise. Now this was a fair bit of tedious work to get this result. It turns out, had we used the method of inspection and expanded the cosine in terms of its Euler representation, we would have gotten the same result. And we can check that this result is correct by using the Fourier series expansion for x of t and substituting in for a k the values that we found. I'm only going to have three terms in the sum, one for k equals minus one, one for k equals zero, one for k equals plus one. When I have k equals minus one, I'm going to have one half e to the minus j two pi t. k equals zero gives me one times e to the j zero, which is one. And then when k is equal to one, I have one half e to the j two pi t. Combine the two complex exponents into uh, cosine and you see we obtain exactly what we started with. So using the method of integration to find the Fourier series coefficients requires putting x of t inside the integrand and then doing the integration. And oftentimes the most difficult part of that is not setting up the integral but is executing the integration.